Greetings. This is Terry Whitfield, a.k.a. Yasha Ben Israel for the Terry Whitfield Yasha Ben Israel podcast show. Back at you one more time with another special for you. This is the place where we talk about things that people don't like to talk about and things that people don't want you to know. Today, I have a very, 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 very special guest with me today. Brother by the name of Devin King. How are you, Devin King? Hello, I was well, my brother. I was well. How are you doing today? Oh man, I'm doing real well, real well. Yeah, Devin King is a is a, is a, is a long time buddy of mine. You know, an a Israelite friend of mine. And I'm gonna tell you something that 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 that, that really sparked me about Devin. I remember one day I was going down, leaving from Detroit. I was heading on down, and me, me and Devin already knew each other for a little while at, at, at this point. But, you know, I'm not no begging Israelite or one of them Israelites that's out here trying to get my money out of people. Or, you know, I stand on my own two feet like a man. And I messed around and missed my train leaving from Detroit down to Chicago. I went to the train station, and I got frantic and scared and didn't know what to do. You know, I called Devin up. And Devin, Devin got to reaching for it, got to reaching for his pocketbook. Like, brother, you need some money. You're stranded. You need to get back. <laughs> no, it ain't that. I'm just scared because I'm out here by my goddamn self and I miss my train and don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah, that was a blessing, man. That was a blessing, man. And I was encouraging to know that if I did need something, y'all had some. I had a ram in the bush for me. Oh, yeah. So tell me, man, let, let everybody know, wh what inspired you to study just the Bible, period, and, and, and even the Israelite movement or any Christian movement or just the study of the Bible, period? Wh what inspired you, man? Um, I will, I will, I was uh, brought up into the Word. My family wasn't really uh, like into church like that as far as after my parents got the board. But I just say, you know, read my Bible, my children's Bible or whatnot. And um, I kind of fell off as I got older, a teenager or what. And um, I say about 18, 19, I tried to commit suicide. In 2018, I was 20, matter of fact. And wow. I tried to commit, yeah, I tried to commit suicide. And um, I was like, man, I, I got to get back into the Word. I got to get you know, at that time, I'm like, man, I get to church. You know, I just, I just got to get my spirit right. And uh, ever since then, I, I've just been diligently seeking the most out there. Wow. Say, say, so you've been in this. So how long how, how long have you been in this now about? Right now, I'm 33. I found the truth about 2010. So about 11, about, about 12 years, i say. Wow. 2009, 2010. Before wow. I was doing like the, you know, the Illuminati and, and the music thing and, and the false prophets, and that's what kind of pulled me out of the church or out of Christianity and religion to start studying about different religions. And then one of my brothers, he uh, put me up on uh, the curses, his uh, documentary. Uh, and I was just studying the stuff that was in the documentary because I always been against uh, pro black or pan African. And, um, it, it stuck to me because in the documentary it was showing how the Bible aligned with our plight as so called black men and women. What was the America. What was the name of that documentary again? So so the art listening audience could know. Uh, it's called the Curses. It's uh, on YouTube. It's through the Israelite Heritage Organization based out of Chicago, but they have different chapters. And actually, I was a part of the Detroit chapter, and we was doing stuff in the community for a minute. Wow. And we kind of kind of fell off or whatever, but um, yeah, that's that's just the gist of it. But ever since then, just been seeking the most high, most importantly. Just... You know, Detroit has a has a pretty a a a, a unique. Israelite movement and has always had one as long as, since before I was ever even an Israelite. And and the uniqueness about the Israelite movement in Detroit is that it is very family oriented, is not more it's not religious based. 
you know, you you most of most of the Israelites in Detroit, you know, have services or studies in their homes. They teach people from their homes, you know, where they learn together, they eat together. You know, it's like real family oriented. You know what I'm saying? It's, it, and like a underground like. You know what I mean? And you would never, you would never even know. Like, like that particular organization that you thought of, you just spoke of, I had no idea that they had a chapter here in Detroit. Yeah, it was, it was a small chapter. You know what I'm saying? Because at that time, I was just looking up, you know, like, what I was doing. And I found So well taken that I would have never known that I was ever an influence, brother. <laughs> yes, yes, man. It well taken. Yeah. Um, so was this particular organization, it was like home based, would you say? Yeah, yeah, that's how Detroiters do. You don't see a bunch of that standing on the corner stuff here in Detroit. I mean, Detroiters have tried it. But. Wow, awesome. And, and you know what? You know what? Another beautiful thing about Israelites. Israelites, the most high will touch one of these brothers and immediately they will go to work and start building communities and everything, man. I mean, I mean, this not that's not the first time that's been done. You know, I can count. I, if I start to thinking and thinking, I, I, would, I would start losing count on the Israelites throughout America that have set up uh, communities. You know what I'm saying? Whole communities. Bought acres of land, you know, and have set up whole Israelite communities. I think that's important. You know, that's, that's, that's one major key point, you know what I'm saying, as far as um, bringing up the next generation into the ways of the most high, you know what I'm saying, is to get land and have our own, build our own community. So, you know, our children won't be swayed this way and that way, you know what I'm saying, especially yeah. how things are going today, you know what I'm saying, but that's a whole different i tell you one thing, man, if, if I could be blessed to get just the viewership and the listening audience, and that day may come one day, you know, all I got to do is just keep at it, you know, keep at it, you know. Um, but if the day come where I can get the viewership like guys like a young Pharaoh or Polite or even even smaller numbers like Doc, uh, uh, a Minister Inky, you know, a Sarnetta, or any of those guys, those guys get mad views, man. You know, and those guys have gotten so many, Sarnetta, uh, not Sarnetta, uh, Sarasut and Seti and all those guys, those guys, have, and Omar Johnson and them, those guys have made so much money off of YouTube that it's ridiculous, you know, and, and, and some of those guys are still like in begging position. You understand what I'm saying? And, and if the most high ever, ever blessed me, man, to get those kind of views, I would, I would, I would invest, let, let me get that little $4 million deal that, 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 that <laughs> that the Kabul was passing out. <laughs> Man, I'll go around America setting up Israelite Israelite uh, schools all around this country. And, and I always say the most I've lived with four, I mean, ten, five or ten people. And when we do a susu system, a uh, co-op, we 
Now, 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 you say, uh, 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 what kind of system is that again? Well, you know, it's a traditional uh, it's a Hispanic system. Hispanic system. Yeah. 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 Y
we have many issues. But I think number one, to be honest though, yeah. we, nah, I don't mean to cut you off, but I think the number one issue right now with people in general is mental health. I'll buy that. I'll buy that 100%. I'll buy that. And their childhood. Yeah. I think that, I think that uh, we, are you familiar with this sister by the name of Joyce DeGroys? Maybe if I say that. Yeah, she, she, she coined, she coined the post-traumatic slave syndrome. She's a white skin. Yeah, she's a light-skinned sister. I think she's like a college professor, a psychiatrist, a psychologist, or something like that. Yeah, she talked about the post-traumatic slave syndrome. And and, and, and what was that now? She wrote that book. Yeah. Yeah. And she do a lot. She got a lot of lectures on YouTube that she's done about it. You know? And I, 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 I am, I am in agreement with this sister. You know, African Americans, just by way of slavery and what we've been through in this country, we have never been healed from that. You understand what I'm saying? We've never had any therapy. We've had no one who cared to hear our cry, who to hear our plea. You know, to hear our story, to even just even care. You know, and when people go through traumas in their life, man, you know what I'm saying? You know, especially if they're protected, you know, they got all types of psychiatrists and psychologists and therapists and counselings, you know, even in religion. You know, some churches got some excellent spiritual counselors, you know, at least acting spiritual counselors anyway, you know, but. The bottom line is there is something there uh, 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 for every issue. Drug counseling, people that destroy their life with drugs. They they have counseling and rehabilitation centers for these people. You know, but people that, uh, the African-American, the, I mean, people, war veterans, people, uh, 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 people that's been shell-shocked. There's therapy for those people. You understand what I'm saying? What we have been through, there there was no therapy for that. There was no therapy for being a part and, and being forced to participate for five, six, ten generations, you know, of, of breeding farms. Happen to sleep with your sister and produce your nephew and your son. You understand what I'm saying? You know, all that kind of crazy madness. You know, if you dis if you didn't want to sleep with, with with who Massa wanted you to wanted you to breathe with because he looking from the out from the outside. You know, all he looking for is genetic traits that like 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 how you breed dogs, you know. I want my dog to have this feature and this feature. And if those features happen to come within the same bloodline. He's going to make y'all, man. You know, what about, you know, the traumas that we've been through to where uh, uh, the rebellious slave who didn't want to comply just got thrown over and became shark food? Right off the slave ships. You know, you know the old story that Malcolm said, you know, that, it, it, that so many slaves was tossed over them ships. You know, to where the uh, where sharks followed them back and forth from America to Africa, back and forth, back and forth. So to the point to where there's m so many sharks. In, 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 uh, 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 I think uh, was it John Clark or Doctor Ben picked up on that story and said that there's so many sharks in the population of the uh, Atlantic Ocean right now, and, and because sharks can live a hundred years and, 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 or better. You know, uh, uh, they a lot of the whales and the sharks and and, and, and sea creatures in the atom, in in the Atlantic still have memory of that stuff, man. You know, uh, uh, imagine uh, uh, you as a Muslim or Israelite coming over here, and it was just against your whole being to eat pork. 
and spoiled foods. And here come this white man making machines, you know, to pry in your mouth and pry your mouth open and stuff food in your mouth because he needs you to live so he can make money off you. You know, we've been through a lot of stuff, man, that we never had no healing from, Devin. Okay. You know, we never had no healing from it, and we was thrusted into to, into the society. And, and, and like Obama said, you know, forced to get it, hey, pull up your bootstraps and let's go. You know, we wasn't taught the core more values of good, bad, right or wrong. What's healthy, what's not healthy. You know, we wasn't taught these things. You understand what I'm saying? We wasn't taught nothing, man. Just, hey, after we didn't sick dogs on you, hung you from trees, raped your mothers, your sisters, you know, all this old crap, you know. You know, I mean, there's never been no healing from it. You know, I'll give you one more good example. One more good example, and I'm going to let you take the mic. Uh... Here's an example of that, the slave breeding farms, okay? And I talk about this in some of my videos, you know. One of the examples, have you ever heard many of the African-American sisters talk about how they've been molested and raped and stuff like that in their youth? Okay. And, and, and when they tell you this, usually it's always somebody in the family or somebody very, very close to the family, so close to the family that they end up becoming family because they a lot of time end up getting a person pregnant who they molested. <laughs> All of those are the post-traumatic slave syndrome, you know, from the slave breeding farms. I mean, from the early 1800s all the way up until the Emancipation Proclamation. <clears throat> slave and farms existed here in the United States of America. And every slave that was reproduced came from the uh, United States of America by way of breeding because they made it illegal to buy slaves here in this country. So all of the slaves here after the 1800 were forced to reproduce. All of us are... are, 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 are people that was just threw in a pot and made to have sex with each other. It didn't matter your race. I mean, not your race, your relationship to people. Like I said, if they didn't want you, if you didn't want to do it, you just throw a bag over your head and strip you down naked and say, go sleep with so-and-so. You know what I'm saying? And you had to do it. So here you come, the Emancipation Proclamation, slavery become illegal. You understand what I'm saying? And these practices from 1803 all the way up until what? The Emancipation Proclamation. You know, you're looking at about 80 years of this crazy, lawless sex, sexual practices taking place amongst black people. And then America, uh, and then uh, America uh, 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 makes a, a, a slavery illegal, the Emancipation Proclamation, and then they start making laws against the very thing that they taught these people to do. What I'm trying to what I'm trying to do is make that connection, for, but between the, that sexually deviant behavior and the slave breeding farms and that activity in which once they said it was all right to do. In fact, they forced you to do it. You got retarded kids, kids that born just all kind of crazy mental deficiencies, and it all goes back to them slave breeding farms. In massive inbreeding. You with me, Doc? Is, is, is you making a connection with me? Yes, sir. Yeah. You know, and what I'm saying is that these people was, due to these in these sexually duplicitous, uh, deviant, very far from the scriptural sex, sexual Zana law practices, you 
force these people to do this. You inbred these people to do this. That at least up until what well, you talk about an eighty year period, you you can have grandchildren, a great great a great great grandchildren back in in that time. And 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 the crazy part about it is they were the the the, the African American female was was given a a, a a manumission to where if she could produce something like a quota. You you produce the quicker you can give me fifteen babies, I'll give you your freedom. Sure. Now but is that not inbreeding whoredom though? Of course. You got a young lady trying to produce fifteen babies by the time she's twenty six years old. Just so she could get her freedom. You see? And once they made slavery illegal, these these practices became illegal practices now. You sleep with your niece, now you are a pedophile. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? You sleep with your sister now, or your mother, or your cousin, or anything now, now you're incest. It was always those things. But for about a good almost 100 years, be, uh, America needed to produce slaves. And she didn't care by any means necessary. Y'all need to make babies. And that occurred all the way up until Lincoln uh, produced the Emancipation Proclamation. Post-traumatic slave syndrome, and we've never been healed from that. You know, I heard you was telling, telling us about the suicide, the attempted suicide, and all of that. All of those things, Devin, my brother, is linked is linked back to the post-traumatic slave syndrome. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, and, and current things. Yeah, and current things. And not just your life, but in my life. In my family's lives. You know? That's the thing, you know, when you, when you get to that point where you feel like you have an empty inside, like, where just that, that spirit that takes like that off. Yeah. Now I, I I've never I've never wanted to straight kill myself, okay? But I have been driven to the point to where I didn't care. And I've I've been driven to the point to where, you know, I didn't like this world that I was living in. And if the Lord took me up out of here, I did I just wouldn't care. No, it was more so a coward shit. You know, you know what I'm saying? That, and that's just being honest. You yeah. Know, I, would, I would never do that. My spirit was weak at that time. You know? Yeah. I, would, I, would, I mean, even in, even in what, even in my way of looking at it, I never thought about committing suicide, but I have had a strong uh, uh, disdain for this life. You understand what I'm saying? I never had the balls to want to kill myself. <laughs> you know, I, I might want to kill somebody else. <laughs> Blame somebody else for the problem, but I never wanted to do that. I didn't have the the nerve, the, you know, the goal, the heart to do that. You know, hey, so what do you think about uh, the last time I saw you? The last time I saw you, we was there with Malik Shabazz. At the at the Renoko Rashidi joint, and he passed away a couple months ago. Don't think that I didn't think about you when when when, 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 when Renoko passed away, buddy. Yeah, do you recall that night? Yeah, I do. I, 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 I woke up early. I'm like, Shalom, why? Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Do you do you remember anything anything that night? about me uh, uh, explaining to Renoko Rashidi what the uh, release of Lashish was? Bro, I, I'm going to be honest. I don't, I don't even remember what the, uh, his part was about. Wow. Yeah. 
we was there that night. That night, I, I, we was there, and he was showing a lot of his footage, you know, about different African uh, uh, re reliefs and just evidence of blackness all around the world in ancient times. And he came across the reliefs of Lashish, which showed these black people in Iraq, and and he couldn't explain it. You know, he was wondering, like, what are these black people doing, like, in on, in Iraq? He couldn't really, really make that out. And I told him, I like those are that's the uh, reliefs of the Battle of Lashish. You know, that's when the uh, the Assyrians came in and took the children of Israel as slaves. Those black people that you're talking, that you're that you're wondering about, those were the Israelites, and 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 it's a part of the Israelite story in the Bible. You don't remember that? Now that you bring it up. He said, now that, now that I bring it up, you do remember it? Yeah, because I remember because he was taking questions in the past. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was an honorable moment, man. You know what I'm saying? For me, you know what I'm saying? Because a man of that stature. Yeah, you know, a man of that stature. And he was puzzled and couldn't really, really, really make sense of that. Ah, wow. That was easy. You knew what that was when you saw it, th those reliefs, didn't you? No, because I don't remember the, 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 the Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. I can't too, yeah. 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 You know, I used to run with Malik Shabazz a long time ago. A long time ago. Okay, I was I, I used to roam Malik Shabazz when he first first came on the scene. Yeah, oh, that way before Khalid. Yeah, it, I, 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 I'm gonna say it, I'm gonna say it was yeah it was a little bit before Khalid. You know, it it, it, it had some. It was back in it was it was in it was in Khalid's time, but you know he used to run with Khalid. I used to bodyguard a lot of those like Renoko Rashidi and. All of those people that he would come to Detroit, me, uh, my brother Yahada, Dayael Ben Yahuda, he was sending he was sending my Israelite brothers, you know, down to the airport to get them guys, put them up in a hotel, and just to you know watch over them and to pretty much protect them peoples, man. And I met a lot of those legends and. Old old pioneers in the civil rights movement fooling around with Malik Shabazz. What you say, huh? I said, what's the years? That's historic, man. Yeah, all throughout, I would say. Yeah, the nineties. All throughout, I would say from about ninety three. I would say about ninety three. Probably all the way up until, up until the late nineties. I probably ran with Malik Shabazz about a good four or five years. You know what I'm saying? And I ran with him because uh, it was during those years that I was really leaving the, the the Pentecostal church, and I was getting more in tune with the Israelite thing. And because I didn't, I couldn't find no Israelite organizations. I would run with the Detroit Grassroots Movement, Benny White, Ethiopia. Uh, Abdul Rahim, Malik Shabazz, uh, uh, Reparation Ray Jenkins, you know, uh, Kwame Atta, Kwame Kenyatta, you know, uh, Joanne Watson, you know, uh, the, 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 and they were city council members too, you know, uh, uh, just many people that was in that African black movement that Detroit had. You know, I was running to that because we didn't have, I didn't have no Israelites to go with. And bec and through running with them, you know what I'm saying, I got a chance to meet some a lot of important people. I met Malik Shabazz, and me and Malik Shabazz kicked it off real hard, you know, when I first met him, you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, real historic moments, you know. Uh, since then, Malik Shabazz, I'm going to have to say this, and it's on the record, and it's not nothing bad. But today, Malik Shabazz, as well as myself, 
we're not the same people that we were back then. You understand what I'm trying to say? We were young, vibrant, on fire, had different goals, different directions. You know what I'm saying? And that's how I end up growing apart from Malik. You understand what I'm saying? And that's so crazy that you said that because I wanted to bring up youth development today and with your thoughts on youth development and, you know, and our duty as in, you know, being a mentor, you know, creating rights and past program, program, you know, for the youth in our community. For the, you know, I think that's a beautiful thing, man. Today I was uh I was driving driving to my mother's house and I seen some young guys riding on their little mini bikes and stuff, you know what I'm saying? And they were having the times of their lives. And I'm familiar with their parents, you know what I'm saying? And 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 and, and some of these little boys had no dad in their lives, you know what I'm saying? And I saw these little boys just having the time of their lives. You know what I'm saying? On their little mini bikes. And they were just, just, I mean, and the only thing I could just think of is like, wow, those guys have no direction. A lot of them guys ain't got no daddies. And, and, and I just wondered about what their future was going to be. And I wish that there was some type of system, you know, uh, that was set up where I could, become a mentor to some of these young men. You, you understand what I'm saying? For sure. And, and we, we, we need to be, we going to do that, you know, because I'm mean, not making it about this, but I'm building my, my nonprofit organization, you know, trying to be a new organization where, you know, you know, I do the boxing thing, but you some boxing, you know, you know, be a, a, a way to bring in the youth as well as teach, you know, uh, power and self-defense, but you know, teaching life skills, conflict resolution, yeah. yeah, teach them the power of self, yes. you know, yes. and, 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 yeah, because when you teach them the power of self, then everything that they learn, they understand that they're empowering themselves, sure. you know, when I went to school, you know, I, I'm going to tell you something, man, I went, to, I went all the way up to college, and you know, all throughout elementary and just grammar school, high school. I didn't have knowledge of self, man. And I didn't care about learning. You know, but once I learned knowledge of self, I be I, I was I became this instant brainiac. Once I learned who I am, my history, and I and to make sure that I learned my history, I learned all African history that I could. I fit somewhere in there. That's the rise of past. You know. Or the rise of past. Yes. Uh, and and once I began to learn about myself, my history, my culture, all of the power of blackness that we created math, science, history, algebra, geometry, you know, metaphysics. Uh, the medical, we, we created the whole medical hookup. Look at the Iber, Iber papyrus. You know, you know, we created all of that stuff, man, you know. And once I began to learn and understand that, you know, we created architecture. I mean, great things like the arch. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? People don't understand the power of the arch. We created that. Once I began to learn those things, then I, be, I I had a sense of pride about myself, you know, and I began to understand that every knowledge that I learned was to empower me as to where before, Devin, I thought that uh, everything that I learned was because I was pretty much forced to do it. You know, you forced to go to school as a kid. They scare you. They scared of, when I was a kid. They scared you about the truant officer. You missed three days straight. The truant officer coming to your house, and now your mama got legal problems, or your daddy. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? They don't. That that is something that's unheard of today. So we was forced and pressured to learn and to go to school. And only anything I ever learned was out of force and pressure. 
You know, I didn't want to go to school. I didn't want to learn nothing. You know, I didn't care. But it was when I began to get knowledge of self that I wanted to learn martial arts, music, shit, mathematics, history. You understand what I'm trying to say? Yep. Knowledge of self. That's why I use boxing. Yes. Use the techniques and apply it to life. Yeah. Yeah. Teach them everything, man. You know, I believe the children are our future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. You don't know nothing about that, do you? No. You never heard that song, The Greatest Love of All, by George Benson? And then uh, a Whitney Houston turned around and made it, remade it. It's called The Greatest Love of All. Damn, Devin, you must be young as hell, hell. <laughs> yeah, she st- it started off, I believe the children are our future. Teach them well and let them lead the way. Yeah. You know, those are the elements, man. You know, I I talked about stuff like that in the last video I made about destruction of a black civilization. You know, and how the music was soothing and and had had the psychiatry and the healing elements that we needed in the people right there in our music. And that's a very, very good book. Oh, awesome book, man. Awesome. Yeah, you know, I think, I think, didn't he get killed for making those books? It was either him or George M. James from Stolen Legacy. That was a good one, too. Yeah, you ever heard of that one? Yeah, Stolen Legacy. Yeah, I think it was the guy from Stolen Legacy that got killed, George M. James, if I'm not mistaken. What's another book we could throw out there right quick while we talk about books? Uh, Miseducation of the Black Man. Uh, 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 I thought, was it Miseducation of the Negro? I'm sorry. A uh, Carter G. Woodson. Um, how you're under the fellow What was that? How, how uh, you were. Whoa! How Europe underdeveloped Africa? Wow, that sounds heavy. Who who was the author of that of that particular work? Walter Rodney, I believe. Rodney Walter. Yeah, the ISIS papers. Yeah, the ISIS papers. Uh, uh, Francis Cress Welshie. Man, Malik knew all of them people, man. I'm going to tell you, man. I'm going to tell you, bro. Like I said, uh, Malik, Malik will go, Malik will, will send my brothers to go and get them peoples. You know what I'm saying? And, and uh, 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 my, my brothers called, but they, they, would, they would actually bring them people like to my house and stuff. Come pick me up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All kind of stuff, man. I mean, I've met Geronimo Pratt. Uh, 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 not Stokely Carmichael. Uh, Stephen Coakley. Oh wow. Yeah. Uh, Doctor Khaled Mohammed. Uh, oh, his work good too. I ain't finished it, but I would have to. Doctor Khaled. What was the name of the book again? I didn't hear it. Uh, the book of Khaled. It was about Khaled Muhammad. Oh, the book of Khaled. You're talking about by uh, 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 Malik Sh- uh, Zulu Shabazz? Yes, sir. <clears throat> I'm quite sure that's a good book because he uh, Khaled ran with them guys, man. And I'm quite sure Malik Zulu Shabazz knows some information that he should have recorded. Yeah. What about you? Did you know? Did you know that him and uh, Malik Shabazz from Detroit used to run together? Yeah, they all ran together. With yeah, yep, they all ran together. At first, at first, when I first ran with Malik Shabazz in Detroit, 
if we were the a uh, new Black Panther, not new, uh, not new Black Panther. What was they was we wasn't even Black Panthers at all. We was the new Marcus Garvey movement. Okay. Yeah, that's what we were called when we when we first started out. And then he clicked up with Malik Zulu Shabazz, and then they became the new Marcus Garvey uh, Black Panther Party. And, yeah, and I think, I, if I'm not mistaken, him and Malik Zulu Shabazz had some differences or whatever, and then that, that I think that friendship ended up being severed. But I don't, I don't know whether they ever fixed it back up or mended it back up or whatever. But uh, I do know that Malik still... Uh, do he still got that new Black Panther Party thing going? Come on, Malik. Yeah, yeah, from Detroit, yeah. I, I don't... I, I don't know. Yeah, he, he, may, he may have stopped using that after he split from that that movement. He, no, he was kind of... I know he was sick, though. Oh, he, he was went, sick? Wow. Yeah. Well, come on, brother. He, he went over and do the work with him. Wow. Yeah, that was a great soldier, man. That brother was a great, 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 great soldier, man. When he first came out, he was a, he was such a great so soldier that he was a threat. Yeah. Yeah, I, I get I give mad praise and shouts out to him. You know what I'm saying? You know, Malik, I made Malik Shabazz mad at me one time, man. <laughs> Malik and every everybody in the Pan-African movement. And guess, and guess why? I challenged Dr. Ashwa Kwesi. And I couldn't have been no more than maybe about 23 years old. And they didn't like that. Well, I'll say this in all respect, though. You make a lot of people mad, though. <laughs> <laughs> you say I make a lot of people mad. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying, you know. Most people don't like to hear the truth and don't like to be challenged. Yes, know? man. And, and we didn't talk. We, I'm like, look, but my whole thing is, you know, and not that I'm not going to make it about it, but sometimes if, if we learn it, if we got the knowledge itself, if we got knowledge of anything, you know, we should be able to share, you know, and if someone is seeing the truth, you know, we should be open to share, you know? Yeah. O open to, you know, build. Well, I think, I think, I think that by him coming out there, he was open to share, but I don't think that they appreciated my questions, you know? And, 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 and I think that they should appreciate my question because I'm a young man learning. Exactly. You know, and if you can't answer my question, you know, you can you can say, well, brother, get, uh, you know what? Interesting question. I will, uh, But uh, uh, for the sake of time, get with me after the show and I'll talk to you. And then after the show, you could you could let me know, man. Shit, I, shit, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, I mean, shit, I didn't know the answer. I just didn't want you to, you know, put me on front street in front of everybody. I think Ashwa Kwesi said something to the effect. He kept calling Jesus Christ Joshua Christos. And I asked him at the, just like I did Renoko Rashidi, you know. And, and, and Renoko Rashidi was great because I gave him one of those things and he didn't get mad at it. He took it and he embraced it. <laughs> yeah, he took it humbly. He embraced it. You know what I'm saying? He he stood with me. You know, I, th I don't know whether you was there or somebody, uh, the picture I took, you know, he took a picture with me. You know, he, 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 yeah, he signed the book. Yep. You know, I still got that book. Yeah. You know, but I did that same type of thing with uh, Ashwa Kwesi and he didn't appreciate it. And, and, and it caused a big, big uproar, man. You know what I'm saying? Big uproar. You know, he, he was, he was showing some, uh, 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 some photos. We got about a good 10 minutes. He was showing some photos and, and some slides and stuff about his tour in West Africa. And right after he went through all of this Egypt stuff, you know, I asked him, I'm like, why are you taking people to Ghana? You know, you can't tell me you haven't heard nothing about those people in Ghana saying that they were Israelites. Is that true? You know, he said, yeah, they were true, brother. But that, that there's people running around Africa calling themselves Israelites. But Egypt came before that. And I said, well, I said, but you don't understand what I'm trying to ask you. I said, your info, you know, I'm trying to say his information is just 
kind of twisted, you know, because he was saying stuff about Joshua Christos. And I'm wondering, like, what history book can I look in to find a man named Joshua Christos? You know what I'm saying? You know, this was a this is this story was supposed to be about a young Jewish boy. So his name would not have been no Joshua or no Christos. There's nobody in history called Joshua Christos. Oh, they did not like that stuff, man. Oh, they did not like that. <laughs> yeah, they did not like that. I did that with Imam Issa Malachi York. He didn't like it. I think Malachi York said something to the, I went to go see him. He had a spot over there on Finkel. He actually, you know that big white building that used to sit across the street from Steve's Soul Food Kitchen? He had that. He owned that building. That was the uh the that was before the new Wapic thing. That's when he was the Ansur Allah Islamic Muslims. You know, that's when they was doing their thing over there. When he became when he became New Wabic, that place got abandoned and he had a little bitty little storefront place over here on Finkel. And the Israelite brothers used to come and get me, you know, to go see them because they knew that everybody knew that and when it came time for question and answers, I was going to come with one of those loaded hot questions, you know, and I'm listening diligently to your speech and everything. And when you say something crazy, I'm going to challenge you about it, you know. So and I, I was like that ever since a young man and Imam Issa got to talking about the children of Israel and. How did why he be, why they're Muslims because the children of Israel don't exist no more, and how during the the, the Assyrian captivity, the Assyrians took the children of Israel and bore them all in hot oil. And I I just asked them, can you prove that? So they bore all the children. Yeah, he, he said they bore them all in hot oil. <laughs> Yeah, and I asked him, could he prove that? I mean, do you have any historical references to prove that? And he got mad at me. Yeah, he, yep. he got mad at me. And all I just wanted was you to prove, I mean, I want, I'm not going to run around here telling these people all of this stuff that y'all people telling me, man, and, and there's no evidence to back this stuff up. Why, so somebody can come to me one day and discover that that stuff ain't real and then tell me how much of a fraud and a liar that I am? I never wanted to put my name and myself out there like that, man. Yep. It's <laughs> Yep, you talking to a man, man, that have, that have met. I, I've debated. I ain't gonna say I debated these guys. I've, uh, I've challenged uh, Nate Seven. At the concert down hall over there on Woodward, back in the 90s. This was way before IUIC was ever heard of when he was running with the House of David. Oh, okay. You say, what's his name? Uh, Nate Seven, you know, the leader of the IUIC, the Purple Boys. You don't know who Nate, Nate is, the, uh, the, the IUIC guys, the, they the biggest Israelite organization in the game. Yeah, Nathaniel. Yeah, Bishop Nathaniel. That's what he known today. When he was with uh, when he was with the House of David, he was known as Nate Seven. You know, I don't follow them cats, man. Well, I don't follow him either. I've just been in this game so long, man. Yeah, but I know what you're talking about, though. But I don't. But I, 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 we do need, well, we need some kind of Yeah, I remember when them guys popped up, see? You know, I never followed none of them guys, you know? I, but... Yeah, yeah. I challenged him. I'm gonna tell you who one guy who I challenged, and he cracked and he cracked my goddamn head. You ever heard of Rudolph Windsor? Who? Oh. Ru Rudolph Windsor. He wrote the book from Babylon to Timbuktu. Yes. Oh my God, man! One day I called in on a podcast show, and I waited till you know you know how I do. I listen to you. I hear you out. <clears throat> he had question to answer, and I came with one of them loaded questions. I said, I asked him, I said, uh, you say in your book, and, and I believe you, you know, that the, the, the Jews, the Israelites of Mali were black. But every time I do research on these people, 
and, and the Jews of Morocco, I always come across the Arab white looking people. Can you explain that? He explained it to me. And he explained it to me in such a way that as he was saying it, my mind was like, oh, man. Well, no, I didn't say he, it wasn't one that he didn't know what he was talking about. It just wasn't a sufficient answer for me at the time. And it took me about three weeks constantly thinking about what he told me. And the brother gave me an answer that was so real and so concrete, it really busted my head open. <laughs> Yeah, you know, so I, 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 hey, I got what I was looking for, you know. You meet your match out here with that stuff, but yeah, this, this, this show is we about to get ready to cut it short. We've been on for fifty five to thirty, and we only got maybe like four more minutes. They're giving me heads up. Anchor is giving me heads up to end the show, telling me to keep my eyes on the clock. So I'll say that it was a pleasure, a pleasure, a great pleasure. And I've been looking forward to dialoguing with you, Doc. You know, I ain't heard from you in a while talking with you. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, anything you like to say, man, let let the listening audience know what you got going on. You know, let them know. Hey, th- hey put it out there. Let, hey, tell, tell them about your, your Susan show, you know, that you want to talk about. You know, or did, hey, hey, let them know what you got going on, what you want to do with the big brother, you know, the big brother type thing, you know. Hey, you know, the, uh, mentoring the youth. Let, let everybody know what you got going on, what, you, what your ambitions is, and what you're trying to do. Okay, well, right now, um, I try, I'm a boxing life coach. I train people in boxing, the fundamentals of boxing. And we use the fundamentals and techniques of boxing. We use that and apply it with life. And if you want more information, you can contact me at 313-685-0587. That's 313-685. Do do you have any uh any 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 Instagram or Facebook pages you like for people to connect up with you at? Um, you can do my Instagram. It's truly a king seven lowercase. All truth right. A king seven lowercase. That's truth at king seven. No, truly T R U L Y A king K I N G seven. All right. All right, that'll be it. We're getting ready to shut this show down. And that is Yasha Ben Israel, a.k.a. Terry Whitfield, signing out with my little brother, Devin King. Man, I can't wait to do another show with you, man. I want I want to see you get down with, this, with the suits and economics, my brother. Hey, because that's something that we really, 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 really need. And that being stated, man, we are out of here. Shalom. Shalom.